Okay, now our next problem goes like this. We have a reaction on the board. This is a balanced reaction. We're taking ammonia, we're mixing it with carbon dioxide and water, and we're reacting it to make ammonium bicarbonate. And you can see it's balanced. One nitrogen, one nitrogen, three hydrogens plus two more is going to give us five. Here's four plus one gives us five hydrogens. One carbon, one carbon, two oxygens plus one gives us three oxygens, three oxygens over there, and that's it. We've done everything. So the whole thing is balanced. The question says, you use 14.8 grams of NH3 and 41.3 grams of CO2 uh, in your reaction, and you have water present in excess. What is your actual yield if your percent yield is 74.7%? So you look at this at first and you're like, if you don't know what percent yield is, and you're like, whoa, what are they talking about here? This doesn't make any sense. Basically what you have here is we're told how many grams of this we have and how many grams of this we have. We're also told that water is in excess. Basically it means that we have so much water present, we're never gonna run out of water. So given that we have tons of water in the chamber, one of these guys is going to be our limiting reactant. We know this, right? And if we also think about things for a second, for the percent yield, the percent yield is equal to the actual, the actual amount that we produce of this stuff divided by the theory of what we calculate times 100. Now the problem tells us the percent yield is 74.7. We know that, right? And the problem also tells us how much of this stuff we have uh, in our reaction. So from this, in knowing our, what we know about limiting reactants, we can figure out which one of these is a limiting reactant, and we can figure out theoretically how much of that stuff is gonna be produced. So the theoretical yield we can actually calculate from the reaction and using everything else. So we know what the percent yield is, we know what the theory is from the calculations that we've been doing in the limiting reactant section. We can find out that. From that we can then calculate the actual yield. So it's a, it's a sort of a cloaked problem. You, basically all you have to do is calculate the theoretical yield, which is what we've been doing the whole time with limiting reactants, and then using it to calculate uh, the actual that you must have given that you have a certain percent yield. So the first thing we should do, because we're given grams everywhere, is we need to find the masses of everything of relevance in this reaction. So let's find the mass of the following things. Uh, let's find the mass of NH. Three. Well, nitrogen, if you look it up, 14.007 plus three times hydrogen. If you look that up, it's 1.008. So if you multiply this and then add the result to this, what you'll get is 17.031 grams per mole for the NH3. Now, the next thing we need to know is about CO2 because we're given that. That's one of the reactants. Uh, carbon, 12.011, look in the periodic table grams per mole, plus I have two oxygens, so it's going to be 15.99 for the molar mass of oxygen. You can look that up. Do this multiplication, add to the 12.011, and your calculator will tell you it's 43.99 grams per mole. All right. So the only other one we care about, we don't care about water because that one's present in excess, and it's participating, but it's not really relevant because the, one of these guys is going to be the limiting reactant. This is the product. Now this monster over here, this ammonium bicarbonate, is what we need to have next, NH4HCO3. So just take it one step at a time. You have nitrogen, that's one guy here, we have it's 14.007 plus. Next we have hydrogen here, H4, but don't forget we have another H here, so really we have five hydrogen, so just to make your calculation easy, just put five. The mass of hydrogen is 1.008 molar mass. Next we have carbon which is 12.011. And next, I'll continue on the next line, we have, um, we have three oxygens, 15.99. Okay, so we take five times this, we take three times this, we get the results, we add everything that we have here together, and then for this guy, it's going to be 79.028 grams per mole. All right, to make this a little bit easier to read, I'm gonna sort of circle these. So this is important, this is important, and this last one here is important. Those are the relevant molar masses that we really care about, okay? So let's go ahead and do the rest here. What we need to do first is assume that the ammonia 
is the limiting reactant. Find out how much product we actually get with that assumption. We'll do the same thing for carbon dioxide. We'll figure out what the limiting reactant is and how much theoretical yield we get, and then we'll plug it into there to find the answer. So we look back to our problem. We say, well, we're told that 14.8 grams of ammonia is present. So 14.8 grams of NH3. I'll draw a big long line because I know I'm going to need it. All right, so we need to convert to moles and then use the reaction to get over to the product. So what we do is we come back over here for ammonia, 17.031. Uh, 17.031 17 grams. 17.031 grams of NH3 for one mole of NH3. And of course, we are arranging it this way so I can cancel grams of NH3 with grams of NH3. And then what we have over here, now that we're at the uh, step, if we do right here, we stop. If we stop, then we're at moles of NH3, so we're going to use the reaction. One mole of this for one mole of product. So one mole of NH3 for one mole of NH or HCO3. And we arrange it that way to cancel moles of this with moles of this. And now, just to make it easy, because we're trying to figure out we need to know the grams. We need to know how many grams are produced. So we're going to convert this to grams. So what we'll do is we'll say, when you look back here, 79.028 grams per mole. 79.028 grams of NH4HCO3 for one mole of NH4HCO3. Look, I barely fit that there. All right, so moles of this is going to cancel with moles of that. So if we do the calculation, I'll change colors here, 14.8 times 1 divided by this, times 1 divided by 1, times the 79 and some change divided by the 1 is going to give us 68.68 grams of NH4HCO. Three. That's how much is produced in, under that assumption. So we just sort of hang on to that and we'll, we'll look at that here in a second and see how it compares. Now next, we need to assume that the carbon dioxide is the limiting reactant. So we look back at our problem and we see that we start with 41.3 uh, grams of CO2. That's how much we start with. Draw a big long line. We know we're going to need it. Let's convert to moles. We did that here with carbon dioxide, 43.99 grams per mole. 43.99 grams of what? Grams of CO2 per one mole of CO2. So grams of CO2 cancels with grams of CO2. Now we're at the level of moles. So we come back to our reaction. One mole of carbon dioxide for one mole of product. So one mole of CO2 for one mole of product, which is nh 4 h CO3, and we arrange it that way rather than upside down so we can cancel the moles of carbon dioxide with the moles of carbon dioxide. Now if we stopped here, we would have moles of product, but we want grams of product. 79.028 grams per mole. 79.028 grams of NH4HCO3 for one mole of NH. 4HCO3. Okay, and we cancel moles, cancel moles. So let's do this calculation real quick. If we take 41.3 times 1 divided by this, times 1 divided by 1, times 79 and some change divided by 1, what you will get is 74.20 grams of NH4H. CO3. All right, so what did we learn? We did two assumptions. You know, one of them, we assume the reaction is going to stop first when we consume all of our NH3. Under that assumption, we produce this much product. Other assumption, we assume we're going to run out of CO2 first. After, if we do that, we should produce 74 grams. Well, obviously, both cannot be true. The reaction is actually going to stop first once we produce this much of the product. So what we have learned using the, the terminology of the section, is that the theoretical yield is actually equal to 68.68 .68 grams of NH4H3.
CO3, right? And so that's what's gonna be what's produced. After that, reaction stops. We're gonna have some excess of the other reactant, but that's just gonna float around the chamber and do nothing. The problem didn't even ask us for this though. The problem said, what's the actual yield? So you know that the percent yield is equal to the actual number of grams you get of the product divided by the theoretical times 100. Okay, so you just, at this point, you just stick it in there. The percent yield we're given in our problem is 74.7%. You don't need to put the percent sign, just put 74.7. The actual is what we're trying to find, so we'll leave it here. The theoretical yield we just calculated, 68.68, 68, and we're multiplying by 100. So just do this from basic algebra, step by step. First, we're trying to find this. So forget about that for a second. Just divide by 100. When we divide by 100, you'll have 0 0.747 is equal to the actual divided by 68.68. So to find the actual, all you have to do is multiply both sides of this guy by 68.68. So when you do that, you're gonna cancel on the left-hand side, you're gonna cancel 68.68 with this. On the, right, on, on the right-hand side, that's what happens. On the left-hand side, you'll just multiply. So basically, the actual is gonna equal 0 0.747 times 68.68. And so when you multiply those two things together, what you're going to get is 51.30 grams of NH4, HCO3. That is the final answer. So notice this problem didn't say anything about theoretical, well, it, it, talked about, uh, it talked about actual yield, but it didn't talk anything about limiting reactants. It didn't talk about theoretical yield. It didn't tell you what to do. You're just supposed to know when you have a chemical reaction and you're given two reactants in their amounts, you're supposed to know that one of those reactants is going to run out first. The one that runs out first is going to dictate how much product you have, right? And you're supposed to know in your mind that you can calculate that. That's called the theoretical yield. And you're given this information about the, uh, the, uh, the uh, theoretical yield, the percent yield, and how they're related. And so you can calculate the actual yield. So when the problem says, what's the actual yield, the first step in the solution process is to write down the equation for percent yield. The, the solution process in your head should be, okay, write this down, see what this is gonna tell me. I know what this is, I can find what this is. It's a long process, but I can figure it out. Once I know this, I can calculate the top number, which is what I want. To find this, we just simply do the two calculations. Assume one is limiting, assume the other is limiting. Figure out from these answers, this is truly the limiting reactant. The uh, NH3 is the limiting reactant in this case. This is how much will be produced. We can stick this into here. And then at that point, it's just a little bit of algebra rearranged uh, to get the answer. So uh, definitely make sure you understand this. A lot of times you'll get into this in chemistry lab, a lot of times, because you'll calculate how much of something you'll get, and then you'll be sent off to the lab to go and actually do the experiment. And once you do the experiment, you'll measure the results and you'll have to calculate the percent yield. So that's basically where this is coming from. So this is very practical stuff when you really think about it because in real life, we operate with real equipment, with real flasks, with real scales that aren't perfect and so on. So different things can happen to cause the actual yield to not equal the percent, uh, the uh, theoretical yield, which is what we talked about. Uh, and so from this, we can then calculate a measure of success, so to speak. Obviously, in real life, you want to get as close to 100% 100 uh, 100 uh, yield as you can. But in real life, not going to be quite there. So make sure you understand this because it will come into play on your exams and also in your chemistry labs uh, that you're taking in your class.